The Liberal government of Canada's gun buyback has been plagued by one setback after another since its announcement on May 1st, 2020. It really just seems like nothing is going to plan for them. Or is it? Let's have a look. Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be taking a look at a story which came out yesterday regarding Canada's pending buyback program. If you want a breakdown of the story, go check out Caliber Magazine's YouTube channel. A lot of you have probably seen it by now, but he has some pretty good information there which lined up very closely with what I was going to say about it. But he also had some pretty good industry specific information which I really just didn't know anything about. So if you haven't seen that already, go check it out. That's a pretty good video to watch. But in short, this was an article that was put out by the CBC, and it explains that Canada Post is unwilling to participate in the buyback program, either as a middleman or as a part of the collection service. The story is making waves all over the place, but especially on YouTube and on Twitter. Which is a little weird, because this isn't exactly news. Canada Post has held this position on buyback participation for over a year and a half now. Canada Post was one of the first groups that the government actually approached to run the buyback, and they just rejected the notion outright. Special thanks to Tracy Wilson at the CCFR for putting this out for me so I didn't have to go through years of notes to find some of this information. But here's an article from December 2022 by the Toronto Sun showing that they had already consulted with Canada Post on the issue. However, they don't really tell you exactly how far back that was. Now, if memory serves correctly, it was just after the announcement of C21 in the fall of 2022 when this was first brought to light. But unfortunately, I don't have the original article for it, so I kind of forget the exact date. But sometime mid to late 2022 is when Canada Post really first backed out from this. Which means the government of Canada has been stuck on this for almost two years now, with no real progress. This also aligns with another story that came out about a month ago. 42 million spent on the buyback, and it is yet to grab even a single firearm. Now, I think at this point, a lot of firearms owners are just, <laughs> they're just laughing their asses off about the, just the straight incompetence from the Liberal government on this issue. And, and maybe that's even true. But what if it isn't? What if this is all working exactly as intended? Now, follow me on this for a minute, but suppose that maybe, just maybe, this whole buyback thing really isn't about public safety as the government claims. I, I know, I know, crazy, right? Suspend your disbelief for a moment and let's pretend like this ban and the buyback was done for political reasons rather than to keep Canadians safe. What would that look like? First, let's take a look at the handgun freeze. The handgun freeze is rather bizarre. What do you think about it? If handguns really were the problem, shouldn't they have been banned outright like assault-style firearms were? And if they are not a problem, shouldn't they have been left alone? The freeze is an extremely strange compromise that doesn't really accomplish anything practical, except that it's a unique type of slow ban which, unlike the 2020 OICs, requires no funds to operate, with no management required, and no political embarrassments for the government to endure. From a safety viewpoint, it is, it is almost pointless. But from a political viewpoint, it's rather brilliant. It has all of the upsides with none of the downsides. If we go back to original CBC article, they tell us that a confiscation program was a promise in both the 2019 and 2021 elections. Enhanced gun control measures were a part of their 2015 campaign platform as well. However, with only winning minorities in the last two elections. It's not much of a stretch to say that the confiscation program for black scary rifles was critical to their staying in power and winning those elections. However, when the buyback program was originally announced in 2020, the next election was a mere three years later at that point. The election that they should have had when this was announced came and went in October 2023, and their buyback program hadn't even gotten off the ground at that point. They never could have made their 2019 promise in that time frame. In three years, they failed to even begin making good on their election promise. However, there ended up actually being an election in the middle of that time period in September of 2021. An election which was largely won on this very issue. So what was their first order of business immediately after being elected? They delayed the buyback instead of making good on their election promises. Within just a couple months of winning the 2021 election, the amnesty for the buyback was extended to October of 2023, which is when the election originally should have happened. And then, after two more years of making exactly zero progress on the buyback, it was further extended again until October of 2025. Surely you don't think that lining up the buyback with all these election windows is just simply a coincidence. Additionally, despite making no obvious efforts to fulfill their election promises, 
having a so-called assault-style OIC and a handgun freeze on the books is enough to fool a lot of people into thinking that their election promises are actually being kept, while simultaneously allowing them to have a third consecutive election on this topic, despite Canada becoming a more dangerous place day after day. If you take a look at the important things that the government does, they simply make it happen. They don't wait. In the NDP supply and confidence deal, which is effectively what's keeping the Liberals in power right now, the NDP have made several demands, not the least of which happened earlier this year in February. Jagmeet essentially said, you know, enough's enough. You have less than a month to get a pharmacare bill done. If it's not done by much first, I'm out. And the Liberals did get it done in four weeks. They printed some money and they made it happen. I mean, they, they found some room in the budget and they increased their deficit spending. That happened in four weeks, not in four years. Compare that to the funds for the buyback program. In the recently announced 2024 federal budget, they announced a staggering $30.4 million in new funding for the buyback program. Million with an M. Now, considering that even the lowest estimates for the buyback are around $2 billion, with a B, billion, and the highest are even around $10 billion or more, it's, it's really confusing to me what kind of a difference $30 million could make if they actually intended to go through with this at all. The government clearly has no issues creating money and running deficits in order to pursue their goals, so why aren't they doing it here? After all, they claim guns are a plague which is destroying our communities. Surely they could find some money for such a critical safety issue. Why would they be so reluctant to spend on one of their key platform promises when spending is all this government really knows how to do? Another thing to consider is that the buyback idea isn't even just four years old. It's actually quite a bit older than that. Starting in October of 2018, the Liberal government conducted extensive consultations regarding the bans of handguns and assault-style rifles. Even before the consultations, they would have had some idea that they wanted to actually do it. Probably at the very least since the summer of 2018, which is a full six years ago now. That's six years to implement a buyback, and somehow there's still no money to do it? That seems doubtful. But this idea isn't only six years old. It actually dates all the way back to 2010, in what has become a rather famous clip on YouTube. In this video, Trudeau clearly states that confiscation will never be possible in Canada. Here and here is that the first step towards registering your guns is, is just the first step towards taking away guns from everyone. That's never going to happen because here in Canada, we have a culture that has that has grown up with guns and that respects the need to, to go out into the wilderness and shoot things from time to time. 14 years ago, it was clearly his belief that it could never happen. Now, there's a famous saying, when somebody tells you who they are, believe them. This is where the video is going to get a little weird, but just hear me out. What if he was telling the truth in this clip? What if for the past 14 years, Trudeau has known all along that a confiscation program could never actually work in Canada? What if it was never his intention to actually go through with this buyback, knowing from the outset it could never actually work? If you look at his rhetoric regarding firearms and bans and buybacks from this perspective, things actually start to make a lot more sense. Like, for example, take a look at who this confiscation legislation affects the most. It's certainly no one who votes for him. Like, a slow and drawn out buyback, which never compensates anyone, is actually extremely beneficial to him. Not only does it irritate us lawful firearm owners into becoming irate and making this into a polarizing voting issue, but it also seeks to destroy the very culture that he says won't permit confiscation in the first place. It's no secret that one of the pillars of our firearms culture are the gun ranges and the gun stores themselves. And coincidentally, as a direct result of this long drawn out buyback process, a significant number of ranges, gun clubs, and gun stores have just gone out of business or they've closed up shop. Lots of stores were caught with tens of thousands, some even with hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of inventory they could just no longer sell. A simple framework for quick and optional compensation within the amnesty for stores would have been extremely doable in the first six months for a responsible government. And it would have generated no additional controversy. If anything, this would have even lessened the controversy. And maybe even most of all, it would not have cost a staggering amount of money to implement. If you really believe that all he wants is a buyback, then intentionally leaving all of these businesses in limbo for four years until they just crumble into debt and into bankruptcy 
It just doesn't really make any sense. However, if you believe that the buyback is actually the means and not the end, then this actually, actually makes perfect sense. And it's doing exactly what it's designed to do. But even if he could somehow get the buyback to work, how would that really help his election platform? Spending $10 billion to confiscate everyone's guns would simply eliminate an election promise he could make to Canadians to fulfill in the future. And realistically, it's about the only leg he has left to stand on. If there is any hope of him ever winning a future election, he really only has two cards left to play. He's got climate change and gun control. That's it. The country has completely abandoned him on basically every other issue, and he knows it. If he actually solves one of those two problems for them, he loses literally about half of his election platform. And not only that, but if you remember, originally the buyback was supposed to be wholly optional. You'd never be able to use them again, but it wouldn't have been a crime to just not turn them in. That's because any kind of forced confiscation is likely to come with record-setting controversy. Despite what you hear on the internet, mass non-compliance is unlikely to ever happen if law enforcement goes door to door to force the issue. Nearly everyone will just simply hand over whatever they have. However, there will be that very slim, tiny minority for whom this will just this will be the line in the sand. Perhaps even the literal hill they are willing to die on. Even if Trudeau could somehow force the issue in that way, he'd have mass desertion from law enforcement as well as the deaths of possibly hundreds of Canadians to answer for. That would be his lasting legacy. Do you genuinely think that a narcissist like him wants to be remembered for that even if he did believe in this policy simply on principle? Now, I know all this has been a little conspiratorial. The, the simpler answer is just that they are idiots and they, they just don't know how to run a country or get anything done. I, I mean, there's certainly ample evidence for that as well. I guess what it all comes down to is this. All it would take for this to be true is to believe that Justin Trudeau is a snake who would just lie through his teeth and play the long game. Would he really be willing to spend billions of dollars in order to manipulate and divide the entire country into persecuting a group of people that he just doesn't tolerate in order to help him win elections? Does that sound anything like the Trudeau that you all know and love? So, I'd like to thank you all for watching. This video was a little... is a little out there for me. I usually like to deal in intangibles rather than in hypotheticals, but this is something which has always bugged me about the whole buyback. Like, like I get that it's all political and it's not really about public safety, but even if you look at it in that light, the, the way they've been going about doing it just doesn't actually make a lot of sense to me if they ever actually planned on doing it. Speculative as this might be, I think everything makes a lot more sense to me if you just assume that they never truly intended to do it in the first place. Hopefully this will be the only time I'll actually do a video of this nature as it <laughs> really puts me kind of pretty close to like tinfoil hat territory, which I'm, I'm just, I'm really not a fan of that. If you're looking for more solid, concrete information, I recently did a video on some hardcore C21 stats, which I quite liked and actually I have a couple of videos coming out in the next few weeks about assault style firearms and the state of firearms rights in Canada. Just videos with a bunch of core information and none of <laughs> whatever this was. I just had this little piece of dope kind of sitting in the back of my mind and now you might have it too. You're welcome. All that being said, I'd like to thank you all for watching and we'll see you in the next video.